Okay, let's now talk about arrays. Um, the one of the most simple ways to think about an array is a it's a variable that holds a list of objects and it allows us to remember those objects and do operations on those objects easily. When you're working with many variables and many elements, you can actually hold them all together like a container by using an array. Um, let's do a few examples for you to maybe get a better grasp of what an array is. So the way we declare an array is we just go start with our let or more um, and we give it a name like my array and then you just put curly brackets in it. So this is a good way to declare an array if you don't know what is going to be inside it and if you're just going to populate it as you keep going and going with the program. Um, but if you know what's going to be inside that array and what you're going to be holding, you can just um, go around and put those numbers. So like maybe for me, I'm going to just put a few number now. I'm just going to put a few random numbers. Yeah, that's great. So right now I have created my array, which holds one, two, three, four, five numbers. So it has a size of five. If I want to access how many numbers are in an array, I have a specific variable that's already declared by JavaScript called length. So I can just use my array dot length. Oops, sorry, typhoon. And that's also already going to give it to me. Um, just something you want to remember. And if I want to get access to each element on an array, I need to use this thing called as the index. So what index does is it's a number that iterates throughout the length and allows me to access these um, elements that are stored in the array. And when I, what I can do is if I want to um, access the very first element in the array, I can just write the name of the array, my array, open my brackets and put the index. Um, one thing you should always, always keep in mind is that array index start from zero. So to access the first element, you need to write zero. And if I run it, there you go. I have my um, very first element and I can also, whoops. And if I want to access to maybe like the fifth element, I just write four and I get my last element. One thing to remember is that um, make sure the indexes you are putting on, they are valid indexes and they're not out of the scope of the array. Otherwise, you're just going to get the undefined because it doesn't count till five, it counts till four, and that's going to cause your problem to have a few crashes and errors. Um, so yeah. You may also remember when we talk about loops, um, like for loops, while loops, we were iterating through certain variables and increasing. And this is actually a very good way for us to also use um, arrays um, when it comes to that. Um, that those operations. So if we use a for loop, we can actually um, access all of the indices of an array. So I just initialize the i that starts from zero, and then i is going to be less than the size of my array. And i will also get incremented by one. Oops. And now what I can do is 
I can just print out each element that is in there. Okay, so let's run it. There you go. It allows, a, allows me to access each element of the array one by one through a for loop. And this is also why it's very convenient. And they're quite good match for loops and arrays. And one thing that I can also do is if I don't know what's going to be inside my array throughout the program, I can use the for loop to actually put numbers into it. So maybe I declare another variable. Okay, len for length and let's name it five. That's going to be the size of my array. And let me just remove these comments. What I can do is by using the push function, I can actually populate my array. Oh, actually, maybe let me keep this for future. It's going to come in handy just in a second. So what I can do is I can iterate through all of the index values until the length. And with each iteration, I will just add that number by using push into my array. So let me run it. And nothing happened because I'm not printing out anything for the console that's going to allow me to check. And what I'm going to do is now console.log my array. You go. So what this for loop, very first, very first for loop does is that it just pushes all of the i values into my array, and then the second for loop, it just prints them all out to the cancel. And there are also a few more functions that we can do um, with these arrays. So for instance, if I want to um, what if I want to remove the very last element for from my array? Then what I can do is I can use the function pop. That pop. And now if I run this, the fourth one is already removed and it's gone from the array. And that's why it's not getting displayed from this for loop. Also, one more thing that I can do is, let me just get back to the old way. If I know the index of the element I want to remove, like if I want to remove the third element, I can use my array that splice. And then I need to, okay, so I can use my element. I can use my array that supplies. And then I will need to put two arguments into this function. The very first um, variable argument I need to put is the index of the, it's the index of the element I want to remove. So zero, one, two, I want to remove the third element which is located at the index 2 and I also want to put the second variable which is the number of elements I will be removing and that is going to be one I just want to remove two so if I run it you can see that the two is gone and let me just comment this out if I want to remove both two and three I just don't need to do call splice over and over I can just call two, which just means that like the number of elements that are getting removed, including the current index and the next index. So there you go, zero, one, four. Um, so 
Um, one thing I also want to mention is that there are a lot of more operations that you can do with Array and you can find all of those in the Mozilla JavaScript references that I have included in our Milanote page. Um, it's a very great resource for you because our P5 references, it only shows the uh, library that is related to P5, but the Mozilla JavaScript is very great for the JavaScript programming language itself. And I definitely invite you to take a little peek at it and see what else is possible in the great world of arrays.